tell you, yeah, let's let's throw these on the scale. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, Let make start sure with the one see. piece. Yep. Grab that. We'll put this in here. Oh, yep. Then push that out. And we'll get it right there. There All we right. go. So what do we? So we got. BPI 51. I mean, that's almost right in the middle of the entire spectrum. Now, what's the what's our spec on this guy? We're at a so this is a 31 inch drop five. Drop five. Right. So we're 20 26 ounces, 31 inches. Okay, and we're at 51 on the BPI scale. What yeah. what type of players do you come in landing around that 51? Yeah. So that's going to be probably your I guess smaller players, guys that uh, maybe aren't quite developed yet when they're in that drop five uh, zone that. Uh, maybe have a slightly slower swing speed mm -hmm. um, versus the the two piece. So this is going to be like right de dead middle in the middle of our universal scale. Yeah. All right. Put this guy on there. Yep. So we'll put this in. This is going to be the two piece. All right. Yeah. So we bumped up to uh, bumped up to 54 there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's a pretty significant jump. When, what type of changes do you see in a player when they're able to actually make that jump up an additional three points on the BPI scale? Well, so usually when someone fits into that, they're going to be like a slightly slightly stronger swinger. They're like, so but the one thing we will see is a little bit of some kinematic sequence change. Okay. So uh, we'll see guys that maybe hand cast or uh, maybe guys that go lead arm first, stuff like mm -hmm. that, kind of almost in a player that has been swinging a one piece for a while, mm -hmm. it'll actually help them kind of sequence a little bit better. Moving the into the higher BPI. Right. Yeah, right. and that's, as it becomes more difficult to move, it can actually force uh, an efficient change in movement yeah. in the player's swing. Right. So, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, as people progress up through age class, if you're drop five one year, you're still drop five the next year, but I've seen like a three to four mile an hour jump in bat speed. And that, is that right. something that a parent yeah, can you, use to be like, hey, oh, yeah. we're ready to step up into yeah, the... You, uh, yeah, because I mean, especially in this in this drop five category, that's right where most of that development is happening. Yep. Right, so okay. from, right high Yeah, so you're seeing kids that th even three months after getting a bat could be swinging it even faster. Yeah. Okay. That's. I mean, that's what I'm kind of wondering because those are, you know, those are usually the awkward questions we get on social media that we, you know, have a hard time to give canned answers to. Right. Right. Um, let's get that guy off of there now. Let's throw. And just a side note. This one on here. Bigger, heavier is not always better. Yeah. So well, I, like I want to talk see, a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. For so sure we too. definitely like we're saying about like that slightly more inloaded, a little heavier bat could help with some sequence change and could help with some other things. Right. But if we go a little too far, that can yeah, also a, have consequences. Got to find the sweet yeah. spot for the player. So this one now again, we've jumped up to 57. So another progression again. Three, three. Right. And times, this, yeah. you know, all the testing we do, if we change BPI by two points or more, we know it's going to have a significant change on performance. I think, like, to me, the first thing is this just highlights how important it is to, you know, do what you can in your area to test things out and make the right decision because now, same length, yep. same weight, yep. the material properties of how the bat are built right. are changing the way that the athlete is going to swing in a very significant amount with six BPI change. Right. And that's so going to be huge. Yeah, so you have two bats, 31 26. If you go the one piece in the composite with a six point spread on BPI, and right now we're trying to decide between those two with, without knowing exactly why they're different. So I think, uh, you know, when I start to think about other things, how can I just through, you know, I guess just watching, casual observing, maybe I've got a knob sensor, which is kind of usually the most that most people are dealing mm -hmm. with. How can, I, how can I start to decide which one is going to be best for the player? So here's kind of what I'm thinking. I'd be interested to hear what you think about this, Ryder. So I know that this bat is going to provide me with maximum exit velocity over the most portion of the barrel. Mm -hmm. I know it's also going to be uh, the most difficult for me to move fast. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, and then, and then if I look down at the aluminum, the one piece bat, I think that's gonna be the easiest for me to move fast, but it's gonna require the most precision with my contact point True. to maximize exit velo. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm thinking about that. If I'm a parent out there, I'm going to try and pick the right bat for my kid. 
I want to sort of independently evaluate, okay, how fast is my kid swinging and how good is he at barreling him up? And if he's kind of like in the middle of the road in both, I'm probably going to go with a connect. Right. Yeah, when I think right? it's like, kind of split the if, difference. If he's yeah. got the speed, it sounds to me like if he's got the speed, I'm just going this way no matter what. Right. Yeah. Right. And, okay. And I mean, historically, what we've seen is you, it's very rare you see the guy with a ton of speed and he's super consistent with barrel contact. Right. You're going to have your, your more powerful, <laughs> yeah. faster swinger guys are going to have more swing and miss and going to kind of have a little bit bigger of a spread. Whereas the guys that are, maybe the slower swing speed guys tend to be more consistent and they barrel it up a little more often. So it actually probably, I mean, it fits in there perfectly to those three different profiles. All right. Anything else we need to know about uh, this year's lineup of Cat 9s? Just where to buy them? Yeah. Where to buy them? I mean, they're all high-performing bats. And, and to be honest, this Cat 9 composite hasn't hit the market yet. Ooh. Uh, so this right, is a little sneak little peek. Sneak peek. Uh, you'll be seeing these come out in January, so not too far okay. away. Um, but yeah, you know, the Cat 9's been out there, tried and true. You got to connect, that's really taken off this year. It was our first year adding a minus 10 and a minus 8 option oh, really? in that two piece line. Okay. One, because players are starting to get a lot more data thrown at them younger yeah. and saying, hey, you perform better with this, this. bat over this. It's not just yeah. biggest, lightest anymore. Sorry, I hope we didn't make more work for you there. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> um, and then, you know, now adding into our arsenal gonna be that Cat 9 composite that comes out in January. Full U triple SA minus five, minus eight, minus ten, and junior big barrel because, like we said, players younger are now getting better analytical data at what they swing. So, full line coming out. We're excited about it. It's our highest performing to date. All right, awesome. Well, look, Ryder, thanks for coming in. Um, I think the next uh, next video we're going to talk about is some of the U uh, triple SA versus USA baseball and how these governing bodies really change the dynamic of what you're allowed to put in your hands. So, be sure to sure. tune in for that one. Yeah.